What's up everybody? This is Aircrete Harry and today I'm going to be going over my future home design as well as I'll be talking about two pumps that I've used that I found to work really good for pumping Aircrete and for pumping the Epic Mix. I'll also be discussing two other great tools I have that are going to help me with some great future project builds I'm doing. But first I want to discuss this dome build that I did. A lot of people were confused about what material I used. They all thought it was Aircrete, but they didn't watch my previous videos that explained that I was using an Epic Mix. So I'm going to discuss the difference between Aircrete and Epic. Aircrete, you need water, you need cement, and you need a shaving cream consistency foam. You take those three ingredients and you mix them up uh, until you have a consistent uh, mix. And there's different mix designs depending on the type of strength and insulation value you want that you're looking for. I've done experiments for those things in the past. Now with the Epic Mix, the way you mix that up is you add chopped paper in this case, this is blown in insulation from Home Depot. And you mix that really good with water until it's completely saturated. Then you take your, um, your mix and there's a certain ratio and in those ingredients I have. Uh, you mix your paper mulch, your cement, and your expanded polystyrene. And this is the EPIC name stands for Expanded Polystyrene Paper Infused Cement. So here's an aerial view of my property. What you see here, these red lines I'm going to highlight, these represented domes. There were going to be 30 foot domes and 20 foot domes. This was my original idea, the design I had for the house. Um, it was a little too grand, you know, it's really easy to design something on the computer, but uh, reality is it didn't need anything this size. I'll show you how, how big here. This was uh, the original design. This is actually the structural engineering I had done. You see, that's all the... Anyway, um, this original design consisted of six 30-foot domes and 12 20-foot domes. I still like it. It's a really cool design idea. This center space was going to be a courtyard for growing vegetables and things like that, as well as some greenhouses here for growing vegetables and things. But um, it's way too big, not needed, and um, I've uh, reduced the size down. So I'll show you now the new design is this one here. This one here fits right in what would have been the courtyard. If you could see how how much uh, smaller it is and way more practical this design here. Now here's a 3D rendering I did of it and I'll just zoom in on this for you all. Here is the design Oop, minus this dome. You're not supposed to be there buddy. This is the plan for this year, is to build this design. I'll show you a top view. The idea now is to have a 24-foot dome in the center, which would be the living room space, and connected to that dome would be seven 16-foot domes. This is the same size as the dome I just built. 16-foot gives you um, 200 square feet, and so combined the, the eight domes all together, and I didn't actually calculate these little tunnels connecting them, but I'll estimate it at about 2,000 square feet. And um, this dome here is approximately 30,000 to build for all of these domes. That's in materials, basically uh, cement. So, um, let me show you what I got going on here. So uh, this is the entryway. So this is uh, how you get into the dome, how you get into the house through this entryway. This will be like a mud room, you know, coat closets and stuff. As you can see here, I'll go um, 
I'll go clockwise. Here's a, a, a grow dome. And these squares you see represent uh, trays for growing microgreens. These are actually racks. And they're two feet by four feet. And um, the idea here is to have nine racks growing microgreens. And uh, these little plus and X's that you see here, they actually represent um, a person. And this is so I could gauge how much space I had to go in between. So I knew, so that I could uh, determine how many uh, shelves that could fit into this dome. So continuing on, we have the pantry closet, or rather the pantry dome. Here's our kitchen dome, and the bathroom dome, the bedroom dome. And so the idea behind this also is to have an open floor plan. Other than the bathroom, none of the other domes will have uh, any interior walls on them. Uh, some may have a door in this uh, tunnel way, but for the most part, it's going to be all open. And um, anyway, so that's the design there. So let me show you uh, the 3D rendering of it. Rendering of it. Here was uh, me experimenting. See, what I know for sure is there's going to be eight domes. What I'm unsure of still is exactly how I want to have the windows. If I'm going to have any of these round windows like this. Or if I'm going to have these uh, gothic archways like that. That was one idea also. And this one right here is right now the winning idea for me. This is uh, just an archway. Nice round archway. And... Um, also, what I've done here is I incorporated a flat wall. You can see here where the curvature of the dome uh, is curving. And here is a flat wall. So by putting a flat wall in here, so you can imagine, let's see if I can do this. Uh, the rest, the rest of the, the rest of the dome will be gone. It would just be this flat wall. And by having that flat wall, you can have windows, regular square windows, as well as regular square doors. And um, you won't have any hassle with putting a square, uh, a square hole in a round building. This is a much more efficient way of uh, putting windows and doors. So anyway, I just wanted to share this with you. This was the design. And I want to also share with you the um, other concepts that I have here. These are, let me get rid of some of these uh, other domes, okay. Let's get rid of you. Okay, so here we have um, different skylight options. Now these skylights are eight foot in diameter and this one here is like a six footer. So I got these dimensions from a website from a company that sells skylights. And I really want to have a dome, a clear dome skylight in a couple of the domes. And I'm just unsure of where I'm going to get it. So if you guys know of any place that sells, <coughs> excuse me, large dome uh, skylights, uh, please get, send me a link or, or email or something to let me know about it. Um, so anyway, here are the different examples. Here's the Gothic archway. Here's a, a round like window. Here, this dome here is um, is pretty cool. I thought this is a unique design where basically I just take a circular section of the roof of the dome and open it up and you could put some some glass in there and I thought it was really cool because uh, on the inside of the dome you could see where his body is you would normally be hitting the roof of the dome but putting a window in here you have that space and allows you to walk up to the wall and even look out the window and see who's down like who, who's downstairs you know otherwise um you wouldn't be able to do that with the regular round shape of the dome Anyway, so that's what's going on with the dome project. 
I intend to build. It's going to be eight domes and I'm still undecided on these arches and I'm still looking for a place to purchase the skylights. So if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. So <clears throat> this program I've been showing you here is uh, CAD and uh, it's actually RhinoCAD. And there's some other programs that I'm interested in learning like uh, Fusion 360 and SketchUp. SketchUp is um, another program a lot of people are using for designing homes and all types of things. They have all kinds of uh, 3D little furniture pieces you can easily download and incorporate. And um, I'm looking forward to learning some of that. I have a new sponsor, Skillshare. Let me tell you a little about Skillshare. It is an online learning community with over 25,000 online video learning courses in everything imaginable. And they're adding more and more courses every single day. You can, of course, learn photography, videography, marketing business skills. With Skillshare, make yourself a better employee or a better boss. Of course, here I'm really passionate about videos with my YouTube channel. So I highly recommend checking out DIY Cinematography by Ryan Booth on Skillshare to pick up and boost your video content creation skills. The first 500 people are going to be getting two months of Skillshare Premium for free when you go to my link in the description box and you click Skillshare Premiums. Usually just 10 bucks a month gives you access to all 25,000 plus of the courses and counting. Thank you, Skillshare. Now here's one of the pumps that I recommend for pumping aircrete. You don't have to get you don't have to get this machine, but the double diaphragm pump, which works off of air pressure, works really good for pumping aircrete. And this is the other pump that's really good also. It's a gear pump, and this is great for epic mix as well as aircrete. And this is my hydromotion machine, which has on the bottom right hand corner here a gear pump on it. And it works really good for pumping the Epic and for pumping Aircrete. Those are the two pumps that I've used that I've proven work really good for pumping those two mixes. So here's one of the machines I was talking about that's going to make life easier. It's a portable pipe threading machine but I got it because of the torque and it goes with this conversion kit for the Harbor Freight pipe bending machine. It allows you to add a bottle jack and a machine that has a lot of torque for bending the pipes or threading the pipe. Here's the other machine. It's a sidewall tire remover and I got this for two things. One is for mechanical concrete. Uh, you can look that up to get more information on that and uh, it's for also building structures with tires kind of like earth ships and uh, <clears throat> what I don't like about earth ships uh, constructions is they have to fill these tires with soil and slam it with a sledgehammer I don't know how many times until it's fully compacted my idea is to remove one side wall from the tire fill with soil and compact it with a regular vibrating compactor I feel this is going to increase the speed of construction that's the, all the images of my tires I have. More to come. <clears throat> Here is um, the machine, uh, the same company that makes that sidewall tire remover, uh, makes this machine. And I just thought it was really cool looking. So I, I added it here. But um, just in case you're interested in any of this equipment, uh, I'll share their website here. This is their website. You can see they have the uh, tires here. They show you how they take the tire apart and all the different steps. And um, here's the uh, all their machines that they make. And here is me with a mountain of tires to uh, remove the sidewalls from. Here's my foam shredder that I made. And um, this is another machine that's made life so much easier when it comes to making the Epic because you need shredded foam for that. And uh, this machine has worked really good for shredding foam. I uh, 
do plan to put PDF files out, but I also want to see if I can make some safety improvements so no one who replicates this machine will have to put their fingers anywhere near it. Uh, because you really got to be conscious of what you're doing, and if you lapse for a moment, it's going to hurt. Here's a PDF file that I made. It's for sale in my Etsy shop. It explains how to make a gore template so that you can make your own gore patterns to sew to make your air form. Now that's a free seven foot diameter air form. Um, when you purchase any of the sizes, this comes with it. And then at the very end will be the dimensions needed to make your air form for whatever size dome you're going for, 20 or 30 footer. So here's my Etsy shop, and you'll see I have my Aircrete Harry foam generators, 120 and 230 volt. Also, I have um, all the different air form sizes, depending on what size you want to build, anywhere from 12 foot to 30 foot. And there's also a calculator in case you want to calculate your own custom uh, size air form. Basic aircrete recipe, as well as epic mix recipe and instructions. 24 foot dome air form, already pre made by myself. In case you've never seen this before, this is a test that I did comparing a, a block of aircrete to a block of epic. And that was the epic I just hit two times. And I'm going to hit uh, an aircrete sample with a hammer. And you see just like disintegrates. And they both have their place, uh, aircrete and epic. Here I'm demonstrating epic strength again with a 12-pound sledgehammer hit. And um, I ended up hitting this piece two times. And I'm telling you, I swung it as hard as I could. <laughs> And then I let my buddy Greg swing at it with the sledgehammer. Whack! Yeah, I was impressed. It's some good stuff. Here's a water tank Mrs. Aircrete and I recently picked up down in Texas. It's a 3,500-gallon water tank. It's a big boy. And I uh, mounted it up on the top of a hill by the property, so I had some gravity feed. And um, we haul water, so I go pick up water with the pickup, and I pump it in through this bottom pipe there. And here are some custom brackets I made for holding my solar panel system down. It's uh, designed to clamp onto the shipping container. And it actually will work really good for a lot of other things, even like if you wanted to build a deck on your shipping container. Um, yeah, contact me if you're interested in those. I can make those. So I have solar panels on one side of my shipping containers. I need to take four of them and move them to the opposite container because the opposite shipping container gets the sun uh, when the, when the uh, sun goes down in the west. And here's a quick view of my um, battery system. I got the Iron Edison batteries. And they are probably the best batteries you can get for a home uh, solar system. And um, I highly recommend them. And I started a microgreen rack. And this is my very first microgreen I'm growing here. So I'm looking forward to doing a lot more microgreens for the high nutritional value. Anyway, that's it for now. Peace out. I love you all, and I'll catch you later.